um, yeah, I, they came out of this class. And, and uh, you know, again, we don't need to name a person's name or whatever, but there was like four or five months ago when, you know, we heard uh, or he heard that the training was going to be coming. And apparently he had only heard bits or pieces of, of what we do. And uh, he was pretty adamant about how, you know, our, our class was an admin protection class only, and it was not going to be any good. It was going to be all this normal, you know, uh, uh, garbage that uh, has been shoved down frontline staff's throat for so long. But then all of a sudden, when the guy took the whole class, which is, again, is why we say they either get our whole thing or they get nothing. Because when people are trying to change on the cheap, um, I, I get training on a budget. I understand all that. That's what we're all about. We show you how to do that, give them all the resources. But there's a difference when you try to change on the cheap. Uh, and you're only going to give this piece over here or this piece over here that you think is going to fix it when uh, the problem is sometimes folks aren't even aware what the real issue is. So they try to fix over here or they fix over here. And it's that square tool with a round problem kind of a thing. So when they get our whole message and they see the product as a whole, because we take our people through essentially an emotional roller coaster of learning, they they do like this guy did. I mean, this guy, which first of all, I have to commend him uh, because, you know, he, he was, you know, pretty honest in his, with his opinion in the beginning before he took the whole program. And then when he took the program, the dude took to social media and immediately types up this big thing going, guys, I, I gave a scathing review that was not correct. I mean, I only went on this piece of information, but now that I took it, uh, you know, I really, I, I think it's different. Everybody should take it. Did that not happen in this class also? Yeah, so so um, you, you talked about doing it on the cheap. So I was allowed to come in um, during uh, training days for certain uh, programs um, uh, yearly in service. And they, they pull everyone in um, online and they do a, about an eight hour uh, lecture in which there's different speakers throughout the day, I think eight or nine different speakers and provide you lunch and you get CEUs. And um, in one of the 45 minute blocks, I was invited in to speak. And in that 45 minute block, this gentleman was, was sitting in there and this gentleman um, comes from New York, uh, great background of riding the rigs, both um, uh, lots of friends in the FDNY world. Um, I believe he worked for FDNY EMS for a little bit and then worked for um, one of the Catholic systems in New York. So very salty. And um, I opened it with, there's no such thing as an unsafe scene. And if your policy is for staging for unsafe scenes, fantastic, but where are paramedics being assaulted? And he he had a hard time palating that there's no such thing as unsafe scene. There's safe scenes all over the place. The old lady is a safe scene. The old man is a safe scene. The the you know, high school that you go to is a safe scene. And and who is this guy who, by the way, is is dressed in a completely different way than I am? This guy was wearing a suit. He works in a hospital. He's an administrator. He has no idea what it's like to don a polo shirt and a pair of BDUs with some trauma shears on the side and and buck up and ride in a truck. And, and because I hadn't shared background that I worked on both sides of the house, um, I was culturally irrelevant before I even had a chance to start. And right there, um, he shut down. And he remained not only so shut down, but shut down enough to share it with social media and Facebook. And uh, I'm sure if he had a Twitter, it would have been there too. Um, after class, actually at the very first break in the day, he walked up to me and shook my hand and said, wow, why didn't you teach this during training days? And they said, well, I, I can't teach a 16-hour EMS course in 45 minutes. I can hit some high points and move on. And I want you to just consider this. And I, if you're a nurse watching this, if you're a medic watching this, if you're an EMT watching this, I want you to think about it this way. If the entire course that you took that you pass, that you have a diploma on your wall or a certificate, was condensed down into 30 minutes, would you have learned what you learned? The good, the bad, the ugly, the indifferent. And I think every single person can say, no, I needed to be in the quote unquote boring part 
or I needed to be in the part that made a lot of sense, or I needed to be in the part where I failed and I made flashcards and I racked my brain all night long to try and comprehend to make it all work. And, um, you know, that's what the eight-hour course does for nurses and for techs and for physicians in the ED. That's what the 16-hour course that goes much more into the what to do when you're arriving in a uncontrolled scene in someone's house, in someone's arena, in someone's church, in someone's bar, um, and how those things change changes. And um, the common thing I hear at the end of every course is, I wish I had more time. Or can you do another course, like an intermediate or an advanced course? And so this guy who most people would take as a curmudgeon for you know, giving a bad review and saying that it's just for administration, wound up walking away going, uh, I, I was wrong, and and like you say, I, I applaud him for sharing it with people, but he didn't just share it with people. He's been correcting people, you know, ever since that have said, you need to do this controversial thing like, you know, choke someone out or or you need to punch someone in the face, and, and he's saying, uh, is that reasonable? Which, that's a culture shift that, is amazing that you you can see happen. So and, and yeah. we, we, we most certainly agree with that. Um, all of all kinds of things. You know, you know, you've been asked where people could people obviously, people could obviously, obviously the mud hole in my mud hole in my. And uh, we go to places where those people also change, and they go, "Man, everything is different now." Where they're much more into, you know, we're getting them back to where they were when they started, um, you know, into healthcare.